Hey everybody, welcome back to more submarine history with your host, Haiku. Today we're going to talk about U-boat crush depth. This is an area of uh, U-boat research that uh, can be a little muddied, as there is a lot of conflicting information on the net with regards to crush depth and inconsistency regarding the application of terms and definitions, but we'll do our best to sort it out here today. Now, uh, a couple things before we dive into the briefing. First, I am not a material science expert. I am a civil engineer and I do hold professional registration, but it's been over 30 years since I've either had a material science or structural design class. So I know enough to be dangerous. Fortunately, what we're going to talk about today does not require a PhD in engineering or physics to understand. Second, as always, feel free to stop the briefing at any time if you want to study a slide and if you have questions, please post them below and I'll do my best to answer. Third, as usual, I'll present some references up front uh, that were used in compiling the brief. Then we're going to talk just a wee bit about, about material properties uh, along with a little math and then do some practical uh, calculations. Finally, we'll have a chart where we can compare select U-boats with select U.S. submarines. And then right at the end, we'll wrap it up uh, with some conclusions. So let's hit it. Our references for today. So how deep can a U-boat actually dive? We'll start by going to Wikipedia. And from the Wikipedia page, at the bottom, I have it hi highlighted with the red box. They show the test depth of, of uh, 230 meters and a calculated crush depth between 250 and 295 meters. So what is TEPS, you know, what is this test depth? What does it mean? What is the implication? So we have a couple different depths that we uh, refer to. First is the diving depth, uh, and this is the nominal depth listed in the submarine specifications. This is the depth that a submarine would not exceed under normal conditions, uh, and this is verified at the dock. This diving depth will be 40% of the calculated crush depth. The test depth is the maximum depth at which a submarine is permitted to operate under normal peacetime circumstances and is the depth tested during sea trials. This value is 60% of the calculated crush depth. And then finally, the crush depth itself is the submerged depth at which a submarine's hull is presumed to be crushed by water pressure. And this is calculated. So let's just talk a little bit uh, about hoop stress. If I have a long, thin-walled cylinder and I have a liquid moving through it under pressure, or if I take that same thin-walled cylinder, cap it on both ends, and put it into water, I have water pressure acting externally uh, towards the pipe. There are two kinds of stresses that are induced in the pipe itself, and that's a longitudinal stress that acts along the length of the cylinder. And then there's the circumferential stress that acts around um, the cylinder. And that's also referred to as the hoop stress. When we're doing a calculation in this situation, the hoop stress is the critical of the two types. So we're just gonna focus on hoop stress. So how do we calculate it? There is an equation and that equation says that the thickness of the pressure hull is going to be equal to the external pressure applied times the radius of the pressure hull, and that's divided by the yield strength of the pressure hull steel. For a given external uh, pressure, in our case that's depth, the minimum thickness of the pressure hull increases as the radius of that hull gets larger. So in other words, for any given depth, the bigger the boat, the more steel you'll need. And this can be offset by using steel with a higher yield strength. And this was the steel that was used by Germany during World War II for its U-boats. Uh, it's called ST-52. Um, it was a non-alloyed carbon steel. And it's still made today. Um, this chart, I actually took this from a modern-day uh, steel supplier's website um, in Europe. And we can see in the top row the chemical composition for the thickness that we're interested in, which is between 16 and 32 millimeters, 
the carbon content is 0.2%. Um, with regards to the mechanical properties, for the thicknesses that we're interested in, which is between 16 and 40 millimeters, the yield strength is 345 newtons per millimeter squared. So we're going to be able to use this information and we're going to be able to run some quick calculations. And we'll start by doing that for the 7C uh, U-boat. Now the equation I showed you was an equation to solve for the uh, thickness of the pressure hull. We're going to rearrange the equation and instead we're going to solve for the external pressure. So with regards to the type 7C U-boat, the pressure hull thickness as they designed it was 18.5 millimeters. The radius of the pressure hull, 2.35 meters, and then the um, yield strength of the ST52 steel is 345 times 10 to the 6 Newton meters squared. And on the right hand side, I have some uh, English equivalents just to help everybody out. But when we do this calculation, we come up with a um, crush depth calculated of 276 meters. So that's. Um, so that's pretty good. All right, now the Type 9C 40 U-boat. We'll calculate the crush depth uh, for it. Again, we're using the same um, ST52 steel, and we're using it also, again, hull thickness of 18.5 millimeters. The radius of our pressure hull is 2.2 meters, and then again, our yield strength is 345 times 10 to the 6 Newton meters squared. And that result, that gives us a crush depth of 295 meters. All right, so let's look at a chart. And we'll start on the left here. Excuse me. So for the type 7C, as we read down, um, as I said, Pressure hull radius 2.35 meters. We're using ST52 steel. It's 18.5 millimeters thick. Uh, when we run that, the way we ran that calculation, um, our crush depth was 276 meters. Here they show the calculated crush depth of 250 meters. So there could be a couple reasons why our calculation is off uh, from what's stated in the books. It's not that different. Obviously here, they're using the more conservative value of 250, which is fine. We can back calculate from that crush depth, 60% of 250 meters is 150 meters, which is our test depth. And then crush depth times 40% yields us 100 meters, which is our diving depth. And we can do this calculation all the way down um, through these columns. Um, some things of interest here. The second column, the type 7C41, same hull radius, same type of steel. They've increased the steel thickness uh, a couple millimeters, and that results in us achieving a calculated crush depth of 300 meters. So there was a proposal, there was a design and the shipyards were actually gearing up to start production of something called the Type 7C-42 uh, U-boat. This boat, um, it was a little bit wider. You'll see that the radius is 2.5 meters versus 2.35s. Uh, and they intended, the goal here was to use uh, a higher strength steel. And they had selected something called Krupp CM351. Um, I, I haven't been able to find any information on on that steel it's probably still me, made today but it's probably just called something else um, but their goal was to design and build a u-boat that could reach a crush depth of 500 meters and to do that they couldn't use the st 52 steel it would have required the hull would have been so thick it just it would have been unmanageable and there were limitations with the uh, mills and the shipyards as to uh, you know how they could form the steel. So like that 28 millimeters was kind of like approaching the limit. Um, this boat never actually gets built. Uh, production of these boats gets stopped in the summer of 43 when the decision is made to start 
building the Type 20, 21 and Type 23 U-boat. Moving over, we have the 9C-40. The pressure uh, hull radius is 2.2 meters, still using ST-52 steel, still at 18.5 millimeters. Now, so when you look at it, it's basically the same specification as the 7C, but we're able to achieve a calculated crush depth of 300 meters versus the 250 meters for the 7C. Why is that? Because the Type 9C is a bigger boat. And we saw from earlier in the brief that when your boat gets bigger, um, your crush depth goes down. So this is really subtle, but the pressure hull radius 2.2 meters. You'll notice that it's a little bit smaller than the Type 7C. And again, going back earlier in the brief, um, you can, if you can reduce the size of your pressure hull, then you can increase your crush depth. And that's exactly what they did here. So the boat's longer. I mean, it is a bigger boat physically, right? It's longer. It has much more displacement than the Type 7. But the actual pressure hull itself is just a little bit smaller. And they did that so they could achieve that 300 meter depth for that series of boats. So that's what the Germans were doing. On the American side, uh, during the war, you have the Gatto and the Balau class. Um, they're pretty close boats. You know, there's the Balau is basically an improved Gatto. Uh, the Gatto used the mild steel. I don't know what the properties were. Um, but looking at the table, it suggests that the steel that they were using for the Gatto wasn't as good as the ST-52 steel that the Germans were using. Um, because they were only, it, in the in the in the research that I was doing for this, you know, it just got to the point where I wanted to get this done, so I took some shortcuts here with the American subs, but um, I just basically looked at the Wikipedia page. And, uh, you know, for the Gatto, the diving depth is 90 meters, and you can work backwards by applying a 1.5 or 2.5 uh, factor. And you can actually uh, calculate out based on the diving depth what the test depth and what the crush depth should be. That's why those four numbers are in yellow because I actually calculated those myself. Um, but performance wise, from at least as far as uh, depth of operation goes, um, you know, the Gatos were close to the seven seas, but um, you know, th it was, there was a limitation with them. Um, the Blaus solved that problem. They moved to a higher tensile steel that was thicker, and then they were able to get their crush depth up more along the lines of uh, what the Germans were doing. And I don't bring that up to like suggest that like desert, that the Germans did a better job, you know, designing submarines than the Americans. They each had their own philosophies, and uh, you know how you design and build a boat is going to be based on many factors. So, um, POW interrogations and personal accounts of U-boat uh, sailors indicate that the Type 9 C U U-boats using that ST-52 steel with an 18.5 millimeter thickness achieved depths of 300 meters. And, you know, we saw that. We did our own calculation, you know, so we can feel confident in that. Um, a, three, a, three, a depth of 340 meters have been reported by POWs, um, but the U-boat type was unknown. So, you know, the thing is, when we, you know, when we read personal accounts or reports of POW interrogations, you know, you always have to maintain a little skepticism as what's being said. But um, my, my the, the survey of the literature that I did that I had on hands, um, where these depths of 300 meters were reported. It, it, I mean, it's supported by our own calculations and, um, you know, what, I, what I've seen, uh, what I've seen in the technical literature. Now, during the war, Allied ships using ASDIC recorded U-boats at depths up to 238 meters. So that doesn't mean that they couldn't go past that 238. It's just that, you know, that's what was recorded. And you know, it's, it's possible that once you start getting down to that depth, you're hitting thermal climbs in that, you know, the Allied ships are just losing contents with, or contact with the boat. So ultimately, 
you know, we, we don't know how deep they could actually go, right? All we have is, really all we have to go on is like what the, what the sailors themselves were saying. Um, you know, because any U-boat that was on its last patrol, you know, ultimately we don't know what depth it was able to achieve. You know, it's one of those, it's one of those mysteries. So conclusions. Uh, designers understood the importance of maximizing the operating depth of a U-boat in order to take advantage of thermal clines and avoid depth charges. We'll talk about uh, that in a briefing at a later, at a future date. While deep depths could be achieved, metal and weld fatigue was a consideration and U-boats could not stay near that crush depth for extended periods of time. As the war progressed, uh, designers and operators began to understand that stealth was as important as deep depth for U-boat survivability, right? Because if your boat, if your U-boat has a crush depth of 500 meters, but you're a couple miles off the eastern seaboard, it doesn't really, doesn't really matter. Um, Germany's ability to manufacture the steel required for U-boats impacted U-boat production. Urgency to speed construction uh, could lead to problems with weld quality and construction quality assurance. And then finally, uh, information on the internet can be incomplete or misleading, leading to confusion about the actual performance character characteristics of U-boats. So that kind of circles back to that um, snippet from the Wikipedia page for the 7C where they indicate the test depth of uh, 230 meters. They had a, they had a reference um, actually to the uboat.net website, but um, I don't know if it was a forum post or what, but um, yeah, this is something I used to keep in mind. This is something that I've just been become more aware about since, you know, I've been collecting the technical references and stuff. I'm at the point where I'm starting to look at stuff a little bit more critically, like on Wikipedia and stuff, so. And that's it for today, everyone. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the briefing and we'll come back again. Feel free to contact me via email. I am on Discord, Twitter, and I do have a Patreon. Thanks to USNI for doing the job they do so well. Their publishing arm is an invaluable resource to the preservation of naval history. Consider becoming a member so their work can continue long into the future. Till next time, peace out.